Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Franca's Fab Family. I am Franca, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in again. Remember, this week we are looking at some stages of healing and how we can continue on this journey to heal ourselves, particularly if we're parents, um, because the whole program is designed around parenting. The thing is, a lot of parents are still hurting from their own wounds, and when I realized that you really can't effectively help your children if you are still actually really hurting from a lot of your old past and current traumas. So today I'm gonna to give you a couple tips on how you could begin healing. If you have not looked at the videos on emotional intelligence and um, some of your attachment style, setting boundaries, things like that, if you don't have any children yet and you would like to have children, make sure you look at the video on picking your co-parent wisely, that's important, as well as truly identifying why do you want children. These are some critical, fundamental, early stages that I think all parents should look at and if you want more children, you should also consider. So today we are gonna look at some stages of healing. I'm gonna identify three, three things that I know for sure really helped me and three, three areas, three strategies that um, have been proven statistically to help you heal if you are having any emotional trauma or if you are still bound by the past. The first one we're gonna look at is forgiveness. We've all heard the saying, ah, oh, forgive them, forgive them, it'll set you free and things like that. Forgiveness is such a deep power um, to evolve from emotional pain and tragedy. And I want you to really be honest with yourself. And you will hear me say that all the time because healing and change and development and evolution and growth really can never take place if you're not honest with yourself. Many, many people can like hide um, from the world. They can lie to the world, but you cannot lie to yourself and you cannot lie to life. Life knows the truth, whether you, you're honest with it or not. And life is a revolving, I call it a circle a circle of life the beginning and the end where you start you have to end back up so everything will always continue to flow whether you're honest or not you know but life will reflect to you your state of um, where you're at so let's look at forgiveness why is forgiveness so important forgiveness is not necessarily for the other person but it does free the other person but forgiveness is how you internally release holds that you have within yourself that from people or situations that have traumatized you or significantly hurt you. As a parent, when you take time to think about, okay, I'm a parent now. Some of the things that were done to me, I've seen parents do the same thing over to their children. Like they're actually doing the same thing over. And the sad thing about that is that you know the suffering that you endured because your parents did these things to you. So why would any logical, rational adult do these same things to their children? And the reason why they will do the same thing to their children is because they are still imprisoned from the memory and from the hurt from the parent. Now, the, the situation is a lot of the things that you will do now, it shifts a little bit. It shifts. So let's say I like to use the example of abandonment or um, early childhood abuse in whatever um, form that resulted in trauma in the child. In the abandonment case, the physical parent was not there. A parent left you and left a void within you to say, why didn't they love me? How come they didn't feel for me? How come they didn't care for me? What happens if you have not learned to forgive the actions of that parent and release the parent in adult life from abandoning you? What people would tend to do now in their childhood is two things. It, it, will, it will transfer in their children's life in these different ways. I'm sure that there are other ways, but these are really quick reference ways that if you know you haven't really forgiven your your parents who abandoned you. One of the ways is you will overcompensate with your children. You would help them make unhealthy decisions because you don't want them to feel abandoned by you. But this doesn't help their life. You are actually setting them up for um, 
for life's failures because you're not providing them with the proper guidance. You're actually creating codependence and you are, you're supplementing them with this tainted perception of what love is. You know, you're, you're, you're crippling them because you are so prone and so determined to make them not feel abandoned that you're actually emotionally and psychologically abandoning them because you are now filling your own needs and not their needs as a child. If that makes sense to you, let me say that again. What happens when a child was abandoned sometimes in their adult life? What are some of the results that they would do? What they will do is overcompensate for the areas that they were missing in their life to their children. The problem is sometimes because they're not seeing through the glass clearly. They're not like their vision is blurred from the hurt of the abandonment from the child. They haven't been freed from it. So what they do, they begin new hurts in their children. Their decision making towards their children is not from an individual place of what does the child need. It's more from a place of I am not going to abandon you, so I'm going to overcompensate to you this, this neediness. You're going to want me for all the, the days of your life. Those are the kind of parents that will let adult, adult children live with them with no real responsibility because they are actually functioning off of guilt. I don't want this child to experience what, I, what has happened to me, so I'm going to give them the extreme opposite, but all you have done is really created new burdens, new traumas in the child. Another thing parents like to do is say, well, um, my father wasn't there, so it's okay. I don't need to be there. My mother wasn't there, so it's okay. I don't need to be there. And that just repeats the cycle in the next generation because you have not um, healed from your childhood trauma, so you just transferred it on to your children, and the cycle continues. The reason why it's so critical to learn to forgive a person that has hurt you and first identify a lot of the childhood hurts. I keep saying it's so critical for, to heal as an adult is to first, no matter how trivial it sounds to you, go back and make a list in your quiet time, in your private time. I think we are all worth, let's say, a half an hour of time to really soul search ourselves. Like put down the phone, turn off the TV. I um. Find a room in the house that you could really have some personal quiet time, but it's not quiet time to play over the trauma in your head. That's not what you're doing. You're actually becoming a detective to go through your memories. Because again, if our memories and our soul and our bodies and our experiences create building blocks within us, if there is a gap between our structure, our needs, like love, like companionship, like um, safety, like protection, especially in the early age of childhood, they just transfer. You bring them into adult life. They don't go away. So what happened is you're going to take some time and start to investigate your own soul. We have the power within us to actually heal ourselves. We are actually healers within ourselves. And the reason why I can say that is because I am living proof of self-healing. And I've met so many people now that have gone through this journey of self-healing. And it is a journey. The same way the trauma was a journey of trauma, a journey of really bad situations. And some people on the planet has really experienced like... Certain things like, oh my God, I say to the Lord, I could never live through that. Well, God forbid, strengthen me to live through anything, but I would prefer to never have had those deck of cards. You know, like people that has experienced somebody coming in their house and killing their family, rape for a woman, um, physical abuse for a woman, losing a child, things like that. Like it's so emotionally traumatic, but because we are always evolving to our best self, it's critical that we take time to heal ourselves once we experience one of these or many of these human traumas. And it starts from childhood. A lot of the traumas start from childhood. And all we did was bring them into adult life. But the, the, the expectations and the obligations and the requirements and responsibilities in adult life overshadow the need for that emotional healing that we brought into adult life from, from childhood. So let's go through ourselves. Let's become an investigator because what you need to do, you have to start at the foundation of forgiveness. What forgiveness does again, it allows you to release, 
to free yourself from the feeling and the memory of the hurt another person has done to you. The thing is, real forgiveness, internal forgiveness, only has to take place within you, within each person. So let's say someone did something really, really wrong to me for years, like they really did something wrong to me, and I want to forgive them. Honestly, what I'm forgiving them for is the trauma and the feeling and the memory of the suffering that they have inflicted on me. It's a twofold forgiveness. You have to learn how to forgive yourself because you will say things like, I was so stupid. I can't believe in like, let's say in a relationship um, matter, when someone did you wrong, you would think I was so stupid. I can't believe I let this person do this to me. I'm no good. This and this and that. And you would give those lies to yourself as a child now, or as an abandoned child or an abused child or a trauma driven child, you would say the same thing, but in a different way. I must be a bad person because I was born into an unloving family. I must be a bad person because why would my parents not want me? Why would they not, you know, want to like protect me and love me and guide me? So you have to learn how to forgive yourself. It's so critical that self healing comes from self forgiveness because what happens is that you first have to identify that I am bringing these negative emotions with me. They don't serve me. The only thing that they really do is make me quite unhappy. So therefore, I have to forgive myself from holding on to the feeling, the memory of the trauma that this other person has done to me somewhere in my life. And then you can switch towards forgiving the person. People tend to think that forgiveness is automatic or I need to do it now. It's not necessarily the case. You will learn to forgive when you are ready. People don't realize that anger, many times anger, while it's something that you have to control, anger many times is the beginning of getting yourself away from a person. It's like identifying you really did me wrong. And the rage in you is the power in you that um, stirs up in you to say, I need to get away from you because what happens is that if you can tolerate the suffering, that's why a lot of traumatic relationships move from one year to 11 years, one month to 15 years. It's because you allow space within yourself to entertain the trauma for whatever reason to keep it. And you're actually really bound by it, which results in another whole bunch of other um, emotional um, bondage or, or soul tying or um, codependency and things like that. Forgiveness. Let us look at forgiveness. Um, I keep saying our healing is our own responsibility and it's so critical that we take some time to really just explore what those things mean. Forgiveness is the act of releasing a person that has done you wrong within yourself. I release you. When you don't forgive, you actually imagine going to prison. Prison is you're, you're locked up in this small space. You're, you're, your quality of life has diminished. You no longer have the free and you no longer have the freedom as well as the joy as if you were not locked up in prison. And I mean physical prison with bars and everything, right? When you hold someone captive in your heart, you have now imprisoned them within your soul. So imagine the person that have done you the worst things in your life, um, the person that has abandoned you, the person that has hurt you the most in your life, you have now taken that person spiritually, locked them in a cage and placed them within your soul. And you, so two people now are suffering. The person that you have locked up in the cage because you are mentally always the life of imprisonment is a very suffering life. So even if you imprison someone mentally, their life will be affected by all that energy that you are now holding them in your soul. But you are also in prison because everywhere you go, everything that you do, you have this prisoner on your back. And the more prisoners you keep, is the more it weighs your life down. And that's why forgiveness, true forgiveness, is the beginning of full freedom. It's the beginning of freedom. Um, 
I'm going to keep these videos a little shorter than before. So this is just part one. So join me tomorrow and I'm going to give you part two of the other sequences. So again, we're going to look at forgiveness. Let's today start identifying some real hurts. We know the ones that, you know, stick out to us the most in our heart. We know the ones. Let, even if even if you start with self-forgiveness, oh my God, I did not realize that I still had this person imprisoned within me. And the more trauma and the more individuals that you have in your life that has resulted in trauma, that's the amount of people, that's the amount of prisoners that you're walking around with you. So even if nothing else, you have to start to say, wait a minute. I must forgive myself for holding on to these memories, for holding on to this situation that has been done to me, and I am going to start to walk into my own healing. And that begins with self-forgiveness as you move into forgiving the other person because you must let the captive free. You must let yourself free and you must let the oppressor free and find out where do you go from there. So I am Franco Potter. Please tune in tomorrow for part two of this series on healing.